And also tonight, ABC News is reporting there are members of Trump's cabinet tonight considering the 25th Amendment to remove him from office. 17 members of Congress also signed a letter to Vice President Pence asking him to invoke the 25th Amendment. Two members of the White House team resigned today and others may follow. Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski continues our 360 coverage with perspective from one of Colorado's leading political scientists who called today's events a fraught moment in history. How would you describe the events at the U.S. Capitol today? I mean, extraordinary. It'd be hard to see it as anything other than some sort of an insurrection. What do you think the political implications of this could be? Um, it certainly makes uh, President Trump looks like he was inciting this violence. And it makes, uh, you know, the members of Congress who were supportive of these objections look like they were, they were essentially complicit in it. President Trump was out there this morning in a speech. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. He was certainly doing what he could to encourage this. What are your thoughts about the calls by Democratic lawmakers for Vice President Pence to invoke the 25th Amendment? For the most part, the 25th Amendment was really not designed for this sort of thing. The 25th Amendment is largely for a situation where the president is essentially unconscious or unresponsive and, and simply cannot execute the job. But I think that idea is being taken a lot more seriously after today's events. What would have to happen in order to invoke the 25th Amendment? Essentially, the vice president and a majority of the cabinet um, would need to sign a document saying that they are calling on the president to step down. Vice President Pence would then become president for just those two weeks, and, and then there would be the transition to Biden. I don't know how likely this is to happen. Um, the cabinet still consists of people who are very loyal to Donald Trump. Could this have lasting impacts on our democracy? It certainly could. For one thing, there's, there's simply the security matter. When there have been violent attacks on the U.S. Capitol grounds or in front of the White House, we've often seen security ramp up, and those often remain. Basically, you know, people's access to these buildings becomes a little more restricted. Get out of the way! Who's out? I also think we'll probably see people taking, uh, you know, what you might call white supremacist violence or domestic terrorism um, a lot more seriously. I'm Denver 7 investigator Jennifer Kovaleski. <laughs>